Good morning, everyone. Another day's rolled around the corner. Just getting ready to go. This is where we slept last night. I'm just south of Sudbury, Ontario. We're headed down to a town called Drayton, Ontario. We're 300 kilometers. We're three to 400 kilometers, three to four hours south of here. Here's my truck. We picked up this load in Calgary, Alberta. We've been uh, driving with it for three full days now. And we're just finishing up this trip today. It's been heavy, to say the least. It's a heavy load. I'm ready to get rid of it. I don't have a reload set up yet for what I'm empty. I'm probably going to wait to see how long it takes to get me unloaded because I'm going to be uh, unloading this afternoon. So that uh, probably means that my reload's gonna be tomorrow, wherever that might be. We'll see what they come up with. Hopefully it's something quick that I can just throw in the trailer, tie down, that pays well, that takes me right back west. So if you are new to my channel, welcome here. Let me know down below and leave me a comment saying that you're new. Love to welcome you here. I've been making videos every day for uh, over a decade about 13 years, so I document my life as a truck driver, as a husband, as a father. My whole life, really, all compiled into one storyline that I have here on my channel. If you want to go to my playlists, you can see them all in order there. Hope you stick around and subscribe. All right, we're ready to go. Truck's ready to go. Are you ready to go? Buckle up so you don't fall out. According to my expert research, there's a Tim Hortons. 37 minutes that way. It's gonna receive a visit from me. I hope they have decent service. I stayed the night here at this inspection station. I don't like doing that. But I parked like right at the exit so that I could sneak right out as soon as I got up. Well, here we go. They weren't doing any inspections here. It's closed right now, but I still, that's gotta be the worst thing to wake up to, you know? Wake up, good morning, hey, we're doing an inspection, level one. No thank you, don't ruin my morning. I just needed a place to sleep. <laughs> so off we go. Off to the rodeo. <laughs> to get this freight off my trailer. I'm really hoping that my load back is a lot lighter than this, though it might not be. It might be just as heavy. We'll see. I do have a tri-axle with me, so we're probably going to take full advantage of that. If you're not in trucking, a tri-axle is just, there's three axles on my trailer. And that means I can haul more weight legally. Which means I can make more money legally. But is it really more money if you're burning more fuel? I don't know. This is Barrie, Ontario. The first big, bigger city as you're coming down from the north into southern Ontario. I mean, there's Sudbury up north, but you know what I mean. Barrie is sort of what I've always seen in my own eyes as sort of like the gateway to southern Ontario. So this is the east, the eastern civilization of Canada. A long ways away from the west. We're gonna go down about another half hour or so to exit 55. We take Highway 9. That way we don't have to go all the way down to the 401 and uh, waste our time in Toronto traffic. I haven't heard any word yet on a reload. I'm sure they're working on it now. They just want to make sure I'm going to get unloaded today before they send anything through. Here we are. 
sort of at an angle here in uh, southern Ontario. Not like on the prairies where everything's like straight lines, north, south, east, west. schedule. Hope it's not gonna be raining while I'm unloading. <laughs> it's not raining that bad, but you stay away from Toronto. I mean, these small towns and the countryside here is just... This would be an awesome place to call home. You almost forget that Toronto is like 30 minutes, 30 miles away. <laughs> Probably some pretty old farms here too. This area is a lot older than mine. Like, I, like I've said before in past videos, our area, our, my, uh, we, we settled it in 1874. This was probably settled in 17, 1600s, somewhere in there. I'd have to research it myself. Maybe I'll do that once I stop. I'm always curious to find out you know, how old towns are and what they were like when they were founded, who founded them. Are the descendants of those founders still here, or are they gone? They've been replaced, or... It's always, always neat to travel around. You know, North America, which is Canada, the U.S., in my mind, is uh, it's such a big place. There's so much to see. In one kilometer, turn left on, Laura Street West, CR-10. That's the best part of this job, in my opinion. The best part is traveling around seeing all these places. I've never been on this road before. I would have never seen these farms. Some people would be like, so I don't care about the farm. Well, it's nice to be able to see the stuff that you don't usually see from the main highways, right? It's not the same as just driving down the highway, driving down the interstate or the freeway at 401. Turn left on, Laura Street West. Look at this coming to a little town here. Did you even know this town existed? I didn't. What's it called? Where do I gotta turn? Not here. Not here. What's over the hill? <laughs> oh, that's a steep hill. Let's take her easy on the way down here. Let's take her easy. That was that was fun. I don't know what this town is called though. Probably what about 50 people living here maybe? Alma, that was called? Easy, easy on the downhill. Easy. Whoa, some steep hills in here, though. This is Drayton. Oh, I gotta turn left here? Oh, this will be fun. Hopefully there's no cars that come right up to the stoplight. Oh, and there is, of course there is. Ah, 
they might have to back up. There we go, that wasn't so bad. You can definitely tell that this area is older than my area, right? Just the way the streets are built. They're built for horse and buggy, not for 75 foot trucks. But here we are, living the dream, making it work. Okay, so those look like rain clouds ahead of me. I hope they're not coming this way. I don't mind a little bit of a drizzle while I'm working, but I really don't want to get completely soaked. Well, I think we're here. Hopefully someone will come and get me because I have no idea. I'm looking for shipping and receiving. I saw one sign that said, proceed to receiving area. I don't know what that is. Be somewhere around here. Oh, I'm gonna go in this way. This looks like a receiving type area. So why is there no signs? Like there should be big signs directing us. No idea. No signs in any of these buildings. I see a guy walking over there. I might go bike him down, talk to him. About 45 minutes and I was empty. Thank God I didn't want that stuff anymore. That was literally weighing me down. I was. Oh man, oh boy, you did good. That was a heavy load through the hills. Wonder what they're gonna put on me next. It'll probably be just as heavy. All right, so. I'm gonna go to a truck stop right now in uh, Kitchener, Ontario. I have two options. Kitchener is just uh, about a half hour south of here. I can either go to Petro Pass, they got cheaper fuel, or I can go to Flying J. I'm gonna go to Petro Pass. And off we go. There's no reload booked yet, but we're close. So in the meantime, I'm, I am just gonna head down to Petro Pass in Kitchener and wait there. It won't be today anyways. The time here is 3.30 already. There's no way I'm getting loaded today, but they might have a direction that I can head uh, tonight yet, you know, so I can be somewhere in the morning. I don't know if they got a reload for me in Quebec or if I go down to the States. We'll see. For now, I may as well go fill up the tanks with the cheapest juice I can find out here. It's all pretty expensive, but it's even more expensive in Quebec. So either way, I've got a fuel in Ontario and down here, even if they send me back up north, it's still cheaper down here. So we'll go fill up the tanks, find ourselves a parking spot, get comfortable until they uh, send me my marching orders. We have about yeah, 35 miles or so from the, from the truck stop. That'll bring us down to the 401, which is the main corridor through here anyway. I'll need to get there no matter where I'm going. I'm not sure what town this is. I'm trying to read that sign on that signpost over there. It starts with an E. Elmry. Elmro. Elmra. Using me. Elmira. Elmra. E L M R A? E L M I R A. Elmira. 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 I 
probably pronouncing that wrong. El Elmira. Elmira. So neat to live in these towns. Look at this house coming up here on the right. A white one. Wow. Oh, there's more of them down here. So much character in this town, like wow. Our towns in Manitoba don't seem to, well, some of them have some character, some of the older ones. Our towns are all a little newer. It always makes me think when I go through a town with character like this, I always think, wow, Europe must be amazing. One day, Britt and I are still on our bucket list. We're going to go to Europe. We're going to explore. We want to go to Germany. I want to go to uh, Scotland and Ireland for sure. Uh, I want to go to, you know, see the countrysides of France. Of course, all these, uh, and all these other places as well. But what I want to do is I want to go to the, go to Europe and rent a car and drive through the small towns to really get a feel of the culture in that country, right? I mean, the small towns, that's where you're going to really, really get, get a feel for it. Oh, look at this. Coming up here on the left, there's an Amish buggy. It's the second one I've seen. A lot of Amish around here. Check that out. There was actually an Amish settlement that came to Manitoba south of where I live. They settled around Vita, Manitoba, and they came from Kitchener, Ontario, around here. I wonder if it's uh, from the same colony that these people were from. Yeah, they started a whole new uh, Amish colony down there. Great place for it, too. It's completely secluded. Very few people go through there. It's heaven on earth for the Amish, right? The Amish are actually our cousins, our distant cousins of the Mennonites. I always joke around and say, uh, you know, the Amish and the Mennonites are cousins. We come from the same cloth, sort of way back in the day. Uh, but the Amish are like our extremists. <laughs> what do you get with an extremist Mennonite or an extremist Christian? Ex you get extremely passive people that just want nothing to do with anyone else. And they will go to great lengths to not have anything to do with anyone else. <laughs> That's our extremists. They want so little to do with you that they're not even going to buy electricity from you. They don't even want electricity. They don't want your cars. They don't want your books. Well, maybe they read books. What am I saying? Of course they read the book. They got to read the Bible. They don't want your radio. They don't want your music. They don't want you on your on their farm for longer than you have to be. You know, they're friendly people. But <laughs> they're extreme, right? I, I follow a lot of ex-Amish people online. And, uh, uh, you know, it's interesting learning about their way of life. It's very much like the Mennonite colonies used to be. That's where my heritage was from. But, like I said, just more extreme. But good for them, you know. Because if you think about it, if the, if, if there's a, a nuclear bomb that goes off, right? And the whole grid goes down. The Amish aren't even going to notice. They're just going to keep going about their lives like nothing's going on. They won't even know. Slow down. Truck's turning. Oh, yes, I'm one of them.
We are just around the corner from Pedro Pass. We're down the 401 here just for a short little stretch. See if we can push ourselves into traffic here. Take R28 found in St. Cambridge. There we go. Thank you very much. Give them the thank you flashers. I bet you I gotta get back in that lane right away, don't I? I thought that lane ended. I gotta make a right turn up ahead. Shoot! Ah, shoot! Yeah, I thought that lane ended. They had the short dotted lines, right? You saw that. Oh man, now all these people just let me into this lane. Now I gotta ask them to get back into that lane. Oh man. Yeah, okay, put on the signal, see who lets me in. Oh, that guy's nose just rose on his car, so he just hit the gas. Take R28 found in St. There we go. Slide left in 470 meters. You can always tell when you put your signal on, you can see their headlights jolt upwards, so you can tell they're just punching it to get in front of you, so they don't have to let you in front of them. Oh, little, hey, you didn't have to do that, buddy. You didn't have to. There was plenty of time. No need for that kind of behavior. In 400 meters, take R28 found in St. Cambridge and then slide left in 470 meters. Wait, slide left? So there's two turning lanes here. Slide left? What lane do I gotta be in? This one or that one? Am I in the wrong lane? Slide left. Oh man, I'm probably... 400 meters. Slide left on R28 Fountain Street, Cambridge, and then turn right into 150 meters. Oh man, I am in the wrong lane. Oh, come on. Oh boy, this guy. And then there's these guys. He like, slapped on his brakes to let me in. <laughs> okay, so we want to go straight over. I think this is the right lane. So we want to go straight over this intersection and then turn right after the intersection. See, I experienced both extremes in changing lanes right back to back. So the first time I turn my signal on, I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta get back in that lane. Turn the signal on, I see the car's nose rise, showing me that they're punching it to get in front of me. The next time I was here, I was like, oh, I'm in the wrong lane again. So I turn my other signal on and then I see the car nosedive as he slams on the brakes to let me in front of him. <laughs> so you got to be ready for every scenario on the road. Some people are like overly courteous to the point where they're like causing traffic problems behind them just to let you in. And other people are just dingleberries where they're, they don't, they know you want to get in, but they're just purposely not going to let you in. All right. So I'll probably come back and park behind this guy along the side here or something. We'll see. Those are black squirrels. They come in black? What? No way. Oh, I am at the wrong driveway. What? How do I get over to where we can fuel up? What's going on? Okay, well, there's lots of parking here at least. I'm so confused. Why do they gotta make everything so confusing? Like, is it. Just an Ontario thing. Look at that, there goes a black squirrel by that pole. What in the world? I've never seen a black one before. There's two of them there. Ah, what do you know? Okay, so how am I gonna get into that? I gotta come from the other direction? You've gotta be kidding me. So I've gotta go and like, I gotta go around the block. Cause I they put a boulevard in between there so that you can't make a left turn into the pumps. So if you wanna get fuel, you gotta come from the other direction. So now I'm gonna go all the way around the block. You gotta be kidding me. Why? Why would you build it like that? That makes no sense. Alright, we made it. Why do you got your signal on, buddy? Are you cutting in here or not? Why do you got your signal on? All right, so 
now we can get into the pumps. As you'll see here on the left, there's a, a boulevard. So when you're coming from the other direction, you can't make a left turn into this driveway here to get to the pumps. You have to come from this angle or this direction. It's just weird. beef stew going on in there and we are parked here at the petrol pass still so no phone calls no nothing no updates which means there's nothing nada for us today we knew there would be nothing for us today I was just like I was saying earlier in my last clip I think I was just hoping that we would have a direction I could head tonight to you know get to the shipper so I could be there first thing in the morning but we can't always be uh, we can't always be winners I guess We'll wait here and wait for a phone call tomorrow morning. So I want to give an apology. For the past couple of days, my audio has been absolutely terrible. These mics, unfortunately, they seem pretty handy. They seem like a good idea. The audio quality is just not there. The mic I have on this camera is a, it's a nice Sony wireless mic, but this is also like, it's quite an expensive setup with this camera I have. This is my nighttime camera, pretty much. This is my Sony A7C. Uh, it's the best camera I've ever had. It's my favorite one. It's just kind of bulky to carry around with me everywhere, but I make it work. I make it work. This one has great night quality, as you can see. It's dark outside. Uh, you want to see what the difference is between uh, this and the GoPro? Look, I'm not going to move. I'm just going to switch cameras and show you the difference between the quality at night between this Sony A7C that GoPro sitting right here in the exact same spot doesn't have that same crisp image right and if I add to it something like this let's say we turn off the neons in the back and now I'm just going off this one light that I have up here this is the GoPro Hero 10 it doesn't have great nighttime quality I've talked about this before but uh, for those of you who haven't heard me talk about it yet, this is why I don't use my GoPro at night. But it's great for during the day and it's great to take with us because it's, it's just a small little, little camera, right? It's easy to put in my pocket. This here is the A7C. As you can see, it's a little bit bulky to take with me everywhere. As opposed to this little GoPro, this is obviously really easy to put in my pocket and carry around. This A7C that we're filming with right now also has great depth of field. You see how the background there is blurred out? But the camera's in focus? The GoPro doesn't do that. Let's see if I take the camera away, you can focus on the front. And this guy coming in here with his aircraft landing lights on his bumper. Good thing he's got those on so he can see where he's going in the lit parking lot and down the highways. But yeah, even now, with just this light up here, with this camera, the A7C. Anyways, where was I going with this? Yes, the audio. Well, I have a great microphone on this camera, but the microphones I had gotten, uh, this one up here, see? I had this microphone up here, right? It wasn't. So we tried. Right, and I, I should have realized it sooner, but I got behind. I was on a rush to get down here, and I hadn't actually reviewed the audio on my computer yet until now. A couple days later, three days later, I think, so I won't be using those microphones anymore. Unless if it's like a windy day and I'm outside, it is nice to be able to, you know, if I'm further away from the camera, that I don't have to yell at the camera. So thanks for hanging out with me tonight. We went from Sudbury, Ontario, down to Drayton, Ontario. We unloaded, thank God. That was a heavy load, I'm glad that's off. I felt light as a feather leaving there. I felt like a little race car, like a go-kart driver, it was great. We're empty, we're now in Kitchener, Ontario, right between Kitchener and Cambridge, Ontario on the 401, waiting for tomorrow. So, I hope you'll be here tomorrow, right? If you haven't already subscribed so you don't miss it, it's very important that you subscribe and it's free. 
please go down below, hit that button, hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Hit the thumbs up if you did like the video. Leave me a comment down below if you want to help me out with the algorithm. If you want to take it one step further and help me out for the price of a coffee a month, you can become a member and get early access to all of my videos. If that's not for you, please comment down below. It's the least you can do, right? Doesn't matter what you say. It could just be one word. It can just be a dot, a period. Be creative. I don't know. Surprise me. I'll see you later.